Now, one recent discovery that has been made by researchers in Italy, in Parma, by Giacomo Rizzolati and his colleagues, is a group of neurons called mirror neurons, which are in the front of the brain, in the frontal lobes. Now, it turns out there are neurons which are called ordinary motor command neurons in the front of the brain, which have been known for over 50 years. These neurons will fire when a person performs a specific action. For example, if I do that and reach and grab an apple, a motor command neuron in the front of my brain will fire. If I reach out and pull an object, another neuron will fire, commanding me to pull, my, pull that object. These are called motor command neurons that have been known for a long time. But what Rizzolatti found was a subset of these neurons, maybe about 20% of them, will also fire when I'm looking at somebody else performing the same action. So here's a neuron that fires when I reach and grab something, but it also fires when I watch Joe reaching and grabbing something. And this is truly astonishing because it's as though this neuron is adopting the other person's point of view. And it's also almost as though it's performing a virtual reality simulation of the other person's action. Now, what is the significance of these mirror neurons? For one thing, they must be involved in things like imitation and emulation, because to imitate a complex act requires my brain to adopt the other person's point of view. So this is important for imitation and emulation. Now, there's another kind of mirror neuron, which is involved in something quite different, and that is there are mirror neurons, just as there are mirror neurons for action, there are mirror neurons for touch. In other words, if somebody touches me, my hand, a neuron in the somatosensory cortex, in the sensory region of the brain, fires. But the same neuron, in some cases, will fire when, when I simply watch another person being touched. So it's empathizing the other person being touched. So most of them will fire when I'm touched in different locations, different neuron for different locations. But a subset of them will fire even when I watch somebody else being touched in the same location. So here again, you have neurons which are involved in empathy. Now, the question then arises, if I simply watch another person being touched, why do I not get confused and literally feel that touch sensation merely by watching somebody being touched. I mean, I empathize with that person, but I don't literally feel the touch. Well, that's because you've got receptors in your skin, touch and pain receptors, going back into your brain and saying, don't worry, you're not being touched. So empathize by all means with the other person, but do not actually experience the touch, otherwise you'll get confused and muddled. Okay, so there's a feedback signal that vetoes the signal of the mirror neuron, preventing you from consciously experiencing that touch. But if you remove the arm, you simply anesthetize my arm, so you put an injection into my arm, anesthetize the brachial plexus, so the arm is numb, there's no sensations coming in. If I now watch you being touched, I literally feel it in my hand. In other words, you've dissolved the barrier between you and other human beings. So I call them Gandhi neurons, or empathy neurons. <laughs> and this is not in some abstract metaphorical sense. All that's separating you from him, from the other person, is your skin. Remove the skin, you experience that person's touch in your mind. You've dissolved the barrier between you and other human beings. And this, of course, is the basis of much of Eastern philosophy, and that is there's no real independent self aloof from other human beings inspecting the world and inspecting other people. You are, in fact, connected, not just via Facebook and Internet. You're actually quite literally connected by your neurons, and there's whole chains of neurons around this room talking to each other, and there is no real distinctiveness of, of your consciousness from somebody else's consciousness. And this is not mumbo-jumbo philosophy. It emerges from our understanding of basic neuroscience.